we really have the chance to scale what works in our public schools in a way that can really be impactful for children. Our public education system is really that promise that we make to our children that everybody, no matter what their zip code, no matter what the color of their skin, should have access to high quality education. There are really two achievement gaps in the United States at this point. There's the one that we talk about every fall when the test scores come in between white students and more affluent students and students of color and students who live in poverty. But there's also an achievement gap between our country and other countries around the world. Why is the U.S. so far behind the leading education systems? Uh, one part of the answer is a lot of learning is actually rather shallow. A lot of reform in the United States has really focused especially on trying to get schools to raise test scores. We have not seen any gain on the international assessments, which are much more rigorous and measure complex thinking skills. In fact, we've gone down. We're kind of at a turning point where people are beginning to realize that we don't have the fundamentals of our educational systems in the states straightened out. There are three pillars of excellence, pillars that the data shows us are very important in children's education. And one of them is competency and support for our teachers. Another is high quality early childhood education. And a third is equitable financing and funding of our schools so that every child has access to what he or she needs in school. Our school system today was really designed in the 19th century for the 19th century. It's very dependent on local property taxes. Redlining, segregation have led to significantly different uh, wealth distribution in our country. And if that is the basis of property tax, then you're going to have inequitable school funding. You see uh, schools that are just not equipped, to, uh, particularly in poor communities, to provide the kind of well-rounded, well-resourced educational opportunities that really tie kids to school. Our society is growing more and more unequal all the time, and education is, is one of the few opportunities to begin to level that playing field. Formula-based funding is now pretty much standard in, the, in many countries, so that the money goes where it can make most of a difference. And uh, I think those elements are very, very important to ensure that every child gets an excellent education. There's a new wave of litigation that's been going on. It's a kind of central catalyst of a broader reform movement. You've seen teacher strikes. You've seen parents join with the teachers. You're seeing political leaders, governors, state legislators come to a deeper understanding of the challenges of our current school financing system. Early experiences are really the most rapid period of development for young children. They set the architecture of the brain. And so early childhood education, it prepares children for life. Early child education, that's the platform on which success at K-12 education, success in college and in uh, avoidance of the correctional system, and even income is based. Most of these educators never are given instruction themselves on child development, and early childhood educators literally earn poverty wages. Now is an opportunity for states and, and cities to really build quality programs by building the quality of the folks who work with young children. In this country, we don't pay teachers and have a, a, as much respect for teachers Good teachers need to be supported. They need autonomy, they need agency, and they need respect, and they need a wage, a salary that can keep them in the profession. Historically, new teachers have just gotten the sink or swim method. The new teacher starts to lose his or her confidence quickly, and by October of the first year, they want to quit. Rich feedback is the most important aspect of helping a new teacher get up the curve the learning curve. The way that we've been seeing the real benefits of professional development are with a coach, side by side in the classroom with a new teacher, helping to translate that learning into practice. The secret to teacher retention is the same as the secret to teacher recruitment. You wanna make teaching into an exciting profession, something that, that teachers themselves find inspiring and therefore inspires their students. 
we really care about working within our system so that we can really reach the most children and and make sure that it's not just one school at a time, but it's whole systems at a time. If we're going to have a sustained improvement in our education system, we're gonna to have to have that kind of local ownership. We have proof points now really across the country that are doing amazing things to both lift up their education systems and also close the achievement gap. There are a set of activities that they've undertaken that really could be done anywhere in the country. Total annual spending in K-12 is over $600 billion a year. Philanthropy is less than 1% of that. Effective philanthropic strategies need to really be highly cognizant of and aligned with the public sector needs. In the 20th century, the model was typically grantor makes grant to grantee, donor makes donation. In the 21st century, you have to think about a range of resources. We're using all the tools in the tool chest to um, accomplish our, our aims, including advocacy and policy and messaging. Philanthropists can take a chance. They can take more risk and support people. Philanthropy can take a leading role. An educated populace is, is urgent if we're going to be able to have any chance of addressing these larger issues like climate change, like scientific advancement, like engagement in our democracy. And we really need to make sure that all of our children, not just some, are getting the education they need. We really have to be thinking about getting every child what that child needs now.